Welcome to the 33rd edition of the Student Yachting World Cup in Pornic on France's Atlantic coast, an event organized by students for students. Open to all countries to compete, the 2013 edition welcomes 14 teams representing 12 nations. The event is racing on a J80 as selected by the organizers, a 26-foot one-design keelboat race with a spinnaker. Popular worldwide, the J80 is a modern sports boat which has a big boat feel and is fast and thrilling to race, requiring focus and teamwork and rewarding the five-person teams with an adrenaline high. The 14 countries come from four continents, an impressive spread with a crew list full of top sailors who have already made their mark in the sport. Among the favourites this year are the University of Southampton team skippered by Max Richardson, who was selected after winning the Student Yachting Nationals earlier this year. There are also many teams from outside Europe, including the USA, China and Japan, who are all fielding highly experienced crew lineups. Switzerland is also fielding a strong team. They have put in a strong performance in previous editions of the Student Yachting World Cup, but it has been several years since they claimed victory in 2007, and they will be fighting hard to get back on top this year. Host nation France is desperate to win the cup on home waters, and with two teams, Kedge Business School and XHEC, representing the country, they maximise their chances. A podium finish would not come easy, and the French had their work cut out to unseat the Irish team skippered by Philip Duran. A laser sailor, Duran had achieved top 10 finishes at world and European events. Also highly experienced at elite level was crew member Sophie Murphy, who has represented Ireland three times at the ISAF Youth Worlds. This year it's a completely new team. Um, there's only two people from the team last year, so we're just same as everyone else. We're trying to prove ourselves. We want to keep consistent, um, sail as well as we can, and at the end of the week, if, you know, if we're there, then we're there. We're trying to do as best as we can. So it looks like a very competitive fleet. Um, I think all the top top ten are very, very close, competitive. Looks like we're going to have some good racing. Um, for us, like um, we're just looking at our speed compared to the other boats. We're happy enough. Um, but definitely there's some great sailors in the fleet and I think that'll make, make it a good week's racing, I think. There is a long week ahead for the 14 teams and racing is all open, with the teams mastering the variable weather conditions and race formats likely to be the winners. The first day would be the one to see some of the world's top university sailors put their sailing skills and teamwork to the test. pretty difficult to, to go into a boat with five people, uh, especially when we're not sailing full-time together. Um, we, did, we did some practice uh, in, the, in the lead up to this um, over the last two or three months um, and you know, the main things we were working on were uh, trying, to, trying to increase the communication, uh, make it concise and, and effective in the boat um, and, and you know, just get our crew work uh, very together. The start of race one saw teams pushing forward on the line, with Ireland over and having to restart to stay in the race and avoid a penalty score. The fleet tacked soon after the start and headed to the right side of the course, where the wind pressure was greater. Switzerland's team, representing the École Polytechnique Fédérale de Lausanne, came out on top, with France's Kedge Business School in second. Already by the first mark, the Swiss team had established a seven-minute margin over the last boat. The Swiss and French team certainly set the pace, and from their form, agility on the boat and teamwork are certain to be amongst the main contenders. On to the second upwind, the leading boats opted to head up the middle of the course, with Switzerland tacking in front of the French to cover them, and forcing the French to tack off and head to the left. A forced tactical move turned out to favour the French, who benefited from a wind shift to the left 
and by the next tack crossed ahead of the Swiss and rounded the windward mark in front, holding their lead until the finish line. Consistency is crucial in sailing, but no such balanced scores for the Swiss and French who punched forward too early in race two and each received penalty points for being over the start. Race two was won by Team Scotland, with Belgium's Universitaire Catholique de Louvain in second and defending champions Ireland in third. All change in race three as the early leaders were back on form. France claimed the win and the Swiss in fourth, with the Irish second and Team USA in third. Team Scotland had a strong day with results of 5, 1 and 9 and rewarded with a top 3 leaderboard place ahead of the Coastal Race. Expect the Coastal Races, not the Windward Leeward to be the game changers as teams have plenty more opportunity to open up leads around the track with big leaderboard gains and losses likely. In the afternoon, the sky cleared and the wind veered to the right, increasing to around 14 knots for the 13.5 nautical mile coastal race. Again, France turned on the style to seal the win, with Team USA in second and Australia's Macquarie University rounding out the top three. On to day two of racing at the 33rd Student Yachting World Cup in Pornic, France, where the weather dominated the day with lots of rain and a breeze of around 12 to 15 knots. The forecast did not look good for a turnaround in conditions either. Well, today it's going to be about 15 to 20 knots and it's going to get stronger in the afternoon, so hopefully we'll get to do the race in the morning before the wind gets too strong. It's going to be from west steadily the entire day, as we were told, and it's going to keep on raining. At the skipper's safety briefing, the race committee opted for a program of three inshore races close to the coast, which would provide exciting but safe racing for the fleet of J-80s. Host nation France continued to put in a stunning card, marking down a faultless three race wins out on the track. This team, skippered by Pierre Curonga, have clearly shown their intentions. Staying close to them though in consistency are Belgium's Universitaire Catholique de Louvain, skippered by Christophe de Blick, as they knock out an all top three scorecard of 3-2-3. Three, Consistency round the track is what pays, and also maintaining an even scoreline today were Australia's Macquarie University, with James Berman driving, who scored a 2-5-4. A jump up from the laser class of Dinghy, Berman has raced to world championship level in the past. At the start of the first race of the day, USA chose the pin end of the start, with the rest of the fleet spread out along the line. The J-80 fleet tacked and headed to the right side of the upwind leg, leaving the Team USA skippered by Andrew Beeler to windward of everyone, but not in an ideal position to make gains. Rounding the windward mark, it was Switzerland's École Polytechnique Fédérale de Lausanne, with Irene Pla at the helm in second place, just a few metres behind Australia that was leading the race. Downwind, Australia chose the left side of the track, with the Swiss opting to go right. A smart tactical move from the Swiss, who rounded the downwind mark first, safely maintaining their lead and now held the advantage. Back upwind, Australia chose the right of the track, whilst the Swiss headed left to cover the rest of the fleet. Who would now make the gain on the upwind leg? All change at the front as France upped their pace to take the lead, and the battle resumed between the Aussies and Swiss for second and third. Better boat speed to Australia, who edged round the windward mark very close to the Swiss. On to the final downwind, an intense test of mind and teamwork as the jibing contest pitched the Belgians, Australians and Swiss in a three-way battle, with each trying to cover and outsail the other. The Aussies held firm to finish in second, Belgium third and the Swiss in fifth, having been overtaken by Team USA.
With seven races already completed, the end of day three would mark the halfway stage in the event and a critical race day as the second discard kicked in to rewrite the leaderboard. Teams were down at the harbour early for crucial boat preparation and briefings. University sailing is strong and highly competitive around the world and these young sailors have worked hard to be selected to represent their universities and nations, so know the importance of diligent preparation. Combining sailing and studies is challenging but massively rewarding. Uh, doing a campaign like this is quite difficult when you're trying to study at the same time. We were away for a couple of weeks from our courses. Uh, we're all engineers, so that's quite tough. Um, if you want to do something like this, if you want to go sailing while you're at uni, you have to really get your work done very early. Um, you have to miss out on some social events, things like that, um, so you can stay focused. The J-80 fleet started in front of the port of Pornig for the morning's coastal race and headed upwind to round the lighthouse of PM1 and onto a fast reaching leg to the Bas Perez point. It was then a surf downwind to the finish line. Lots of opportunity for gains and losses in the breeze. The majority of the fleet opted for the right side of the first upwind leg, with Team Scotland skippered by Alison Moorish, one of only two female drivers in the fleet, and Team USA. France's series leaders, France representing the Kedge Business School, also chose the right track and masterfully tacked to cover the fleet and stay in the favourable pressure. A long upwind leg to the lighthouse, with the crew hiking out hard on the rail, saw France and the USA round first, with the rest of the fleet close behind. The timing of their arrival at the lighthouse was ironic, as intense driving rain then made visibility very hard on the reaching leg. On to the last downwind leg of the coastal race, and France yet again popped up a pace and extended their lead to take the lead over Team USA. The major fight happened right behind as rival teams from Scotland and England went head-to-head -head in a battle of minds with a thrilling downwind planing leg, with England holding the windward position over Scotland on leeward. France accelerated ahead to score another bullet, crossing the finish line with a massive lead. In second was England's University of Southampton team, who overtook both the Scottish and USA teams to step up the leaderboard. The final race was a windward-leeward format, and yet again the stars of the day were France, who secured another convincing win and consolidated their position at the head of the leaderboard. A strong day scorecard from England saw them jump to third overall. Team USA moved back up second after two solid third-place finishes. Behind the leaderboard top three, it is then neck and neck on 32 points each to Team Scotland and Australia's Macquarie University in fourth and fifth with UCD Team Ireland and UCL Belgium on 33 points each in sixth and seventh. As the Student Yachting World Cup was halfway through, teams were all guns blazing to consolidate positions and improve on lost points. University and nation pride was at stake. The weather in Pont Nic, France has certainly put teams through their paces, but today the wind was said to be a stable northwesterly nine-knot breeze, with lots of sun and possibly lighter breeze later. Teams from all over the world are competing, including two Asian representatives, with Japan represented by Kobe University and China by Xamen University. The different cultures competing here offer a unique opportunity for the students to learn from each other, a unique aspect of the event. Uh, my name is Akihiro Nunome. Uh, I'm a Japanese team coach. And the difference between uh, Japanese sea and uh, this Atlantic Ocean is uh, a very big wave and uh, very strong wind and uh, heavy rain. But uh, our team members uh, are going better and, and better. In the second race of the day, the J-80 fleet opted for the committee boat end of the start, except Germany's Aachen University team, who were the only boat at the pin end. 
the Germans chanced their luck to opt for the left side of the course, while the rest of the fleet sailed to the right that had been favourable all week. Against the odds, they found the pace on the left-hand track and rounded the windward mark clearly ahead, with the rest of the fleet a few metres behind. The Germans held on to their lead in the downwind, with the Swiss now in second. On to the second upwind and the Swiss followed the Germans to the left side and closed the lead to the Germans with some impressive strategic racing. Back to the windward mark and Germany only just held on to their lead with the Swiss breathing down their necks and set to make their strike in the final downwind leg. The Swiss opted to sail a lower course than the Germans and at the first jibe had grabbed the chance to use their better speed and position on the track to overtake the Germans. Clearly their crew of dinghy sailors liked the lighter winds to tease their J80 faster. So the Swiss claim their first bullet of the series, proving how tricky these conditions are with tactics and strategy as important as boat speed. For the rest, it was a procession to the finish. An impressive day for the Swiss who finished second in the first race and wrapped up with another win in the final race. In the previous days, they pushed to the front of the fleet but struggled to maintain their form and slipped back through the pack. 13 races completed and great to see lots of different teams making themselves known at the front of the fleet in a superb demonstration of talent. The cold weather on the penultimate day of racing at the 33rd Student Yachting World Cup teased the sailors, but with a clear sky, lovely racing conditions filled the bay in Pornic, France. After a stunning scoreline on the third day, with two wins and two second-place finishes, the Swiss team representing the École Polytechnique Fédérale de Lausanne had shifted up to second overall, although the leading French team were still a commanding 26 points ahead, with the chasing Americans only four points behind. Yesterday we had a really, really good day. We won uh, two, um, two races and now we're in the second place in the, in the overall ranking. And we hope uh, we can keep this position uh, until uh, the, the end of the race. Uh, for now the French team is uh, really in front of us, so it's quite hard to catch up to them. But of course we will try, but uh, the Americans are close behind, so we'll, we'll be very careful not to let them uh, get in front. The first race of the day was a 4.9 nautical mile coastal course with an easterly 10 knot breeze. Most of the 14 boat J80 fleet started at the committee boat end, with a few pushing too hard and over the start. Australia, France and UCD Team Island went straight to the left, with the Irish to leeward the first to tack into clear air. France, the series leaders representing Kedge Business School, took advantage of the whole left leg and were the last attack back to the mark, a strategy which saw them gain on the Australians who were ahead of them and had chosen a similar tactic. Australia's Macquarie University team rounded the mark first, with the French following closely behind. The left side of the upwind leg had paid off. The longer legs of the coastal race require a change in tactics and strategy compared to the windward-leeward course format. The rest of the fleet rounded just a few metres behind the leaders. On the downwind leg, the chasing French put pressure on the Aussies by sailing a more windward course to catch their race rivals, but this tactic only encouraged the Aussies to sail faster and extend their lead. No change in leaders as they dropped their spinnakers around the downwind mark and headed onto a fast-reaching leg. Back onto the final downwind to the finish, with the Aussies still leading. Again, the French sailed higher, this time trying to cover the Aussies by taking their wind. But no French attack could unsettle them, and the Australians held firm, claiming the win. The French finished second, with another top result confirming their leaderboard domination. Three windward-leeward races followed, with the Australians continuing their form in the first race with a second-placed finish, but then lost their pace in the next two.
France could not be held back on the racetrack, winning the first race, finishing fourth in the second and ending their day with another win. With these results, the French achieved an unbeatable points lead and the team representing the French Kench Business School won the 2013 Student Yachting World Cup with a race to spare. An impressive racing series from these university students, great skill, teamwork and focus. So the last day was all about the rest of the leaderboard. With a strong wind forecast, it would be a thrilling final windward-leeward race. The last day of the 33rd Student Yachting World Cup here in Pornic, France, with just one final windward-leeward race to complete the full schedule of 18 races. The winner of this final race would also receive the accolade of the Pornic Cup. Having amassed an unsaleable scoreline, France's Kedge Business School team secured the Student Yachting World Cup title yesterday, so today was all about who would claim the silver and bronze medals, with the Swiss and Americans the likely contenders. At 09.30 hours sharp, the race started in a light rain and breeze of around 8 knots. The adrenaline and tension were high, with the teams knowing this light easterly breeze battle would be all about tactics and reading the wind shifts. With the wind coming off the shore, the left side of the upwind leg seemed the most favoured. In the middle of the upwind leg, the University of Southampton team representing Great Britain and the French Kedge Business School team had secured their places on the left side of the track, with the British ahead and holding their advantage to round the mark just ahead of France, who were chasing hard. Rounding next were the Swiss and Australian teams, who pushed themselves to try and catch the leading boats. At this stage in the race, the Swiss were safe to secure the silver medal, but could they hold it? Onto the second upwind, and the French were intent on also claiming the final race win to add to their cup title. Their focus on each other left the centre of the racetrack clear, and the Swiss surged up the middle of the course. By the windward mark, it was advantaged the Swiss from the École Polytechnique Fédérale de Lausanne. The French were still trying to outmaneuver the British as the leading pack headed down. But no change in the order, with the Swiss sailing a solid race to finish first and with it claim the Pornic Cup and the silver medal in the Student Yachting World Cup. A fantastic outcome. The French finished the race sixth, but were already the undisputed winners of the Student Yachting World Cup. Having won all the coastal races, they were also awarded the AGPM trophy. We have uh, a good uh, individual uh, quality, like uh, Julian and me, we said, uh, to, uh, we said in 470. Mr. Pierre Lawenon said in uh, M34 in, uh, on the Tour de France. So, and the girls say in big boat during the, the, the year, so it, it's the reason why uh, we won. Team America finished eighth in the race to safely round out the podium places with a bronze medal. Strong sailing from this team representing the US Naval Academy, with 50% of their finishes in the top three. The British finished in fourth, just four points behind the Americans. Finishing fifth through tenth were Australia, Scotland, Belgium, the two Irish teams and then Germany. The prize giving ceremony wrapped up a great week of racing, with much excitement from the French who totally dominated. Tough racing and close racing along with great shoreside socials were a memorable experience for all and also set in place friendships which will last for many years. In its 33rd year, having been held annually since 1979, 2013 marked another successful edition of the Student Yachting World Cup. Yet again, the world's best student sailing teams were pitched against each other in a series of races, contested in unpredictable and challenging weather conditions. Excellent race organisation and superb race courses for the intense racing were complemented back on shore with lots of apres race socials to help mix all the teams up and meet each other. The mix of 12 nations from North America, Europe, Asia and Oceania 
gave the event a true international appeal and the teams a tough week of racing. Kedge Business School's win marks the sixth time France has been victorious at the Student Yachting World Cup. Their win in the opening race was followed up by a penalty score for being over the start, but the team quickly bounced back from this error and went on to win 10 more races, claiming a total of 11 wins in the 18 race series. They were unstoppable, winning the cup with a 27 point margin over the second place Swiss. More often than not, their wins were extensive, with clear margins over the next team. A well-deserved win. See you in 2014 in France for the 34th Student Yachting World Cup.